Hello and welcome to Floyd Models Kit Review Time. Today we've got Meng's latest release. This is the 148 scale F18E or Super Hornet, the Echo form. To be honest with you, very, very excited about this kit. When it first was announced, one, it's nice that it's turned up relatively quickly. Um, we haven't had a long, prolonged wait for it. But secondly, I think this is one of those aircraft which is slightly being overlooked. Now don't get me wrong, I built the Hasegawa version of this kit loads of them as you know i've built literally hundreds of these kits it's the thing okay and i'm a massive hornet fan super hornet legacy and super bug fan as well uh, right the way through it's my favorite aircraft okay but the old one the hasagawa one is just showing its teeth it's one of the very early block five block ten um hornets uh it's pretty much just as it went into normal production so there's a lot of things that are different between a modern uh, Super Hornet like you know the block 20s and things like that block 15s and so forth especially the new block threes um, The you know just showing its age just a little bit. There is other kits out there. Let's face it Italeries is a pre-production Horrible thing. Okay, very much and to be honest Ravel released this kit and that's just awful um, I just don't know how they managed to get that quite as wrong. 30 second one, don't even start me on that because that was just annoying to the point where I never even released the review with it because it was bad. Uh, but anyway, this particular one, must admit, saw the things to it, seen all the CAD work, seen the stuff, never seen a review. I've never seen the plastic. This is gonna be purely my own thoughts right the way through. The thing that does worry me is the box art, because I don't think the box art is actually that good. I don't know what these these are, well, I do know what they're supposed to be, but as for the colorings on them, I'm not quite sure. Um, you know, obviously we've got the GBU sort of 20, you know, uh, four down there and all the rest of it, and it's just like, what color is that? It's supposed to be green with this, and is this a training round, or, or I don't know, anyway. Apart from that, box art, very nice, as you can see right the way through. So, working our way around on the box, as you can see, we've got one down in there. Uh, very nice from the actual uh, Gold Morius, uh, VFA 87. Sort of not quite a cag bird, because it's all in the dark ones. Lots of kill markings, things like that on there. A lot better as well. Colour callouts, as you can see down there from AK. Kit number for this one is LS012. I don't know what dinosaur that is, but yeah, something like that. And then, as I say, we've got the cag bird down in here. Uh, from VFA 31 okay with Felix on now if you might think this looks remember I did this one the Tom Catter's Cagbird 144 Revel kit which actually is a nice kit as a little bit of one of our fun weekend builds recently as well so there we go but anyway it is nice to see a little super bug down on here uh, so if I can get in the box again it's not a massive box it's a deep box but it's not a huge massive box we are greeted by this and win cash prizes Wow, okay, what, what can I win? Don't know, we'll look at that in a minute. Right, so we have separately bagged, looks quite nice. I'm surprised there's not bits on this protecting it, uh, but there we go, we've got the actual main fuselage body there. We've got the underside, when this is gonna go together pretty much like every other horn it has done since the eons of time. No, it really is as well. It looks like it goes together very similar to that again one. Okay, so we've got this one down in here with the tails, looking very nice. That looks really nice. Don't want to get ahead too much here, but it looks very nice indeed. Okay, match pair. Obviously for fuel tanks and various things. Oh my lord, then we've got a bag of bits down in here. That's, my oh god, I hope that's okay. Just thrown in there like that. But anyway, we've got various parts. And again, looking at the breakdown already, we can see the E coming along, which to be honest is my favourite one. I prefer the, uh, the F, sorry, over the E. The growlers and things like that, looks all very nice. Oh look, we've got Mavericks markings in here. Tom Cruise will be pleased. Okay, so here we've got a nice little book. So let's jump straight into this. We've got a little thing down in here on the Superbug. These are these pull-out things uh, with the information on them. These little sheets, which again, got some little bits on here uh, for the engines and things like that. So, yes, okay. And obviously a little bit of background on the Hornet. We'll stick that out of the way. 
Okay, so down in here, we've got a color uh, booklet, which is quite nice. So we've got your instrument panel, things like that. We're assuming this decal's going down onto all of these. Okay, right the way through. Cockpit, making up that standard type of tub, various things. Nothing too much going down in there, as you can see. And then obviously, nose wheel system is gonna go in underneath, pretty much standard to all the different ones on here. It is nice that we haven't got that standard way they do it normally with the two seat tub and then put a cover on the front bit. They have done them separately. So that actually is a quite nice way, again, nose wheel system going in. There is a little bit of plumbing for the refueling lines and things like that going down in there, as you might imagine, and then that being fitted into the center of it, okay? And then, oh, we've got different ECS covers as well. Ah, wow, this is getting quite good. Okay, so we've got the various parts going down in here for the wing section. It is this standard way onto this one. And then we've got the ECS system. So we've got the early type and the late type as well onto those ones as they fitted through. Uh, so that's okay. And then obviously we've got the wing tip system for the wing fold section is gonna go in underneath there as well. So we have to make sure we haven't got any wings to open up underneath. Okay, intakes are not full right the way through. Um, so sorry the intakes are full we don't get any engine detail unfortunately which is a little bit of a shame but we do get the usual bits down into there so you're making up the wheel wells which are going to go in and then put in there's not a lot of room inside any of these okay they've done the door system which is going to go onto the inside pretty much how Hasegawa did it and then this fits in underneath Hasegawa sort of did it where this was molded in one these have done them separately so it'd be interesting to see how this does all go in and shoehorn in one nice touch is is this entire side section goes on so we don't get any sort of nasty seams and things going around with this one so that's quite nice right the way through cockpit going up underneath we've got some poly caps and some various bits down in here as well making up so we do have posable tail planes we've got the split piece glass system which is quite nice going through on those ones as well making up your HUD and then obviously it's talking about putting glass work in but you're probably going to wait okay no section going in so there is no radar but we've got the gun as well being fitted or the gun cover being fitted down in there the area behind the actual cockpit as well and then obviously we've got the things making up for the leading edge uh, slats and that and then depending if you're having it normal or drooped depending if you're going to be removing these little pegs at the front and I assume it's the same as well for the actual main flap system you'll be able to deploy those as well uh, depending on which ones although it's not pointing it out now so we'll just check this one it is saying retracted positions and then we've got the covers as well being fitted down onto those all right ah, there we go so that's it so if you are doing them deployed or up and down you've got both versions I have to say, you've got to do them down because a Hornet with a more power down looks really nice. Okay, and then we've got the outers being fitted onto this one as well. So again, depending if you're going to do wings folded up or down, would be depending if you're going to have these on or off as well. Okay, so that's those being fitted down and in, into this one. And again, leading edge slats and not. So this is just your different versions if you're going to be doing up or down with the wing fold, okay? We've got the tail planes going down in there as well and rudders being fitted. We've got the little blinker light on the outside being fitted down into these. It did say about not gluing and things, so they are somewhat posable right the way through, okay? And then you've got your nozzles being made up. So you've got your nozzles, and then obviously we've got your flame holder for the burner cans, things like that being fitted down at the back. And then obviously it all being fitted down onto this one again it looks like we do have a maybe 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 i don't know uh we might be getting gear uh you could probably pose this as well but sometimes they give the option where you can have it with the actual uh nose uh strut down for the catapult uh, to be inflicted off okay so just checking on that i'm just seeing so you've got c1 and c2 so I'm just not sure, but we have got some nice decals as well around the actual nose gear fitted in, which to be honest, we saw it pass a gear as well, which is a nice touch. Okay, we've got all the various bits and pieces being fitted down in here, the pitot tubes, the antennas and stuff being fitted for the gear, gear doors being fitted in the open position, main gear going down as well. And again, just like the Hasegawa one, it's quite nice that we have got all of those decals down as well for the actual main gear struts wheel wells uh, doors and things being fitted to this one as well and then we've actually got pins which looks like a nice chop with poly caps which means you have got a poseable weapon system on this one by the looks of it so we've got pylons being fitted together we've got the fuel tanks we've got those gbu 24s we were talking about which probably you'll paint them in a better color than blue we've got um 
the Sidewinder Rexes, the big off-bore, off-site ones. And okay, we've got the uh, modern version of the A120Cs as well, or we've got your sort of classic AIM-9, which you could technically do as a captive carry version. And then we've got the uh, targeting pod as well, which is like a funny version. It's like a lantern, but not quite. Okay, purely because the lantern pod's not used on carriers, so the Navy have their own one done, the 228. Pylons being fitted in, don't worry about the all look, look, they're at funny angles, they're supposed to be like that, okay. And then obviously, we've got the mounting of the weapons down in there, the pylons, the fit, and then you go back to doing the seat, which I did wonder. Okay, so the seat's being fitted down all in there as well. We do get a pilot as well, which is quite a nice touch, and he's got his helmet mounted queuing system uh, helmet on there as well. So for the sight, so that goes down in there, aerials, boarding ladder, open or closed, which again, another nice little touch with this one. And there you go, that completes. Maybe we get a mast set in here, we'll just make sure we do, looks like we do. So we've got a mast set down in here as well. Hopefully it'll be die cut so we can do that. That's a very nice touch in there. And then we've got the markings. So as I say, if you want to do it as a Tomcatter for VFA 31, you can do it for the Cagbird down in there, or we've got the low vis version as well which is quite a nice touch. So we've got both of those ones down in here. We've got VFA 87, the Golden Warriors as well with their version. And then we have got Pete Mitchell's jet. Don't do it. <laughs> I'm actually going to air shows and model shows and it'll be these everywhere. Don't do it. Uh, to be honest, I don't, am I the only one who doesn't like these markings? I just, yeah, don't get it. Anyway, uh, there we go. So we've got all of those fitted down in there as well. So you've got your weapons for your markings and the various bits and pieces. You've got your color call outs as well. And that completes it. Looks good. I have to say, all of that looks very, very nice. I can't complain about any of that at the moment, which is most unlike me. Okay, so. And I'm not just gonna sit here and blow sunshine up the kits behind, because normally I'm uber critical about them. So, decal wise, as you can see, we've got lots of decals. Let's keep that safe. Okay, so the decals, done by Cartograph, look really good, solid color all the way through. The little MFD uh, ones up here look good for the cockpit. So, we'll see what the surface detail we've got. But generally, good register, good strong colors. Yeah, very, very nice. Pop for the two don't do it <laughs> okay pretty good no problem at all looks nice okay so we've also got in here just have before some interesting bits if we can get them out so we do get this and i can't feel it so let's pop me magnifiers on these are die cut so that's actually quite nice so these are die cut masks come in quite handy. So again, first time I've seen them sort of, you know, routinely done just like that. The other thing as well, we've got down here for the weapons, so for the GBUs, for the sidewinders, things like that, and for the AMRAMs. So that's actually quite a nice touch. And again, another little bit of photo etch here. So these are the engine burner or flame holders, and this is that little bit of mesh, which in theory is a mesh system that's behind the pilot seat for cooling down some of the electronics down the back there so that's actually very nice indeed so let's pop those in and keep those all safe right where are we going to start so if we start i think with the, the main bits the fuselages and then you can click off as you like great use staples okay so let's move some of this out of the way as you can see it looks pretty darn good right the way through it's a nice strong hard chinky plastic as I call it, very Hasegawa-esque. There is a little bit of texture to it, it's not as polished as perhaps Hasegawa, but as you can probably see on the close-up, it's got all the panel lining with the riveting in there right the way through as we'd expect. One thing nobody ever seems to do, apart from obviously the lesser manufacturers, shall we say, like uh, Italeri and that, is um, speed brake. So this panel here is actually a speed brake which opens up, the tail comes in a little bit uh, for obviously doing braking and to be honest, all the flaps and everything all move with it. But you haven't got an option on those. Not that it's a, a big bugbear of mine, but I just, nobody really does. Also down in here, these are actually nav light areas uh, and they're molded in plastic. So you can't just put in, perhaps like you can with the Hasegawa ones, a little bit of clear uh, and then paint that and then you get the sort of nav lights as well. These ECS areas down at the back, 
um, you know, for the actual engine controlling system. Uh, again, options down in there as well, so you've got that open as you can see. And nicely, they've sort of hidden the injection point in there. So that'll be covered. So again, you haven't got the usual ones of two big plugs in the wings that we've seen with Hasagar and things like that. Speaking of which, you can see you've got the riveting and the access ports and everything else like that right the way over on that one. We have got details down here on the sides. So that's a nice touch as well. No problem at all. And underneath, as we know, it's all good as well. Okay, so that's actually looking very nicely done in there. So 2020 on that. <coughs> We've also got the lower section as well. So, and we've got some poly caps in there. I hate staples. I really detest staples in bags. So again, makes it a little bit floppy, but by the time everything is in here, we'll be absolutely fine. So again, it is a lot of composites and things down in here. We have got the wheel well sorry, the, the access boarding ladder just down in here like that, it's no problem. The cooling vents and various things are in there as well. You've got your flash, uh, flash and, sorry, chaff and flare buckets, can't speak today, down in here. Okay, so they're in there molded as well. Some manufacturers have them in photo etchings like that, but they haven't. And again, the cooling bits and pieces just down in there. We've got that side plate, it's gonna fit in. So again, pretty much standard as we've seen with everybody else do it. Okay, but it is a complex shape. So trying to get them all in there, is always going to be a little bit of a problem. So, if we go out here and get out of these bloody staples, we'll be all right. There we go. <coughs> so, what we've got down in here is the sides of the fuselage, and then obviously we've got the uh, uh, sides of the cockpit, the various things, the slime lines, the nose, all the various things. And we've got also the actuators on here on sprue A. So as you can see, gorgeous details right the way down the side. Okay, so again, this I do believe has normally got a little slot in it. So there's no slot in there either. Okay, these are split for the out, for the inner uh, ones and then obviously for the outers they are one piece. So we said before, this side is obviously closed up for folded up and uh, sort of in flight position if you like. For landing and powered down, obviously the flaps and slats are all deployed and everything, you're onto this side. Again, down on here, this is your ECS pipes, just down on this one or on the other side, you've got the older version with just the scoop. Okay, so that's those down in there. There's the other one. Sides of the cockpit, again, nice touch because Hasegawa would have you put in this bottom plate in as well. It's a bit of a nightmare because it ran along this panel line. They've molded it all in one, but generally it all looks very nice indeed. We've got the nose, we've got the instrument panel, the instrument comb in. Instrument panel, as you can see there, looks very nice indeed, so no problems with that. And again, just down in here, can't see any problems at all. That's all looking very nice indeed. Okay, so this is the flaps, tail planes, control surfaces, things like that. So as you can see, really very nice detail, nice surface detail, riveting, all the usual bits we would sort of expect down in here. I can't see any problems with these. So down in here we've got the flaps and slats and the various parts as you can see, looking all very, very nice indeed. Main flaps, tails, looking good, inner parts and things like that. And again, you have got this system, and again it's the same way as Hasegawa did it as well, as this plug. Let's face it, Hasegawa sort of taken the crown with this a while ago, so anyone to come along is gonna use artistic license from that kit to work on this one. So yeah, that's all good. Okay, so the wings. So down here, sprue F, we've got the wing system. And again, underneath here, it's all the holes that opened up already. So I haven't got to open up any of the holes. The pylons are all, I think they're something like seven degrees off the front, it's a weirdo design, but it's the way that obviously for dropping fuel tanks and stuff, clean separation uh, and everything. Okay, so these are the little angled pieces you got for the, uh, the various wing folded options on this one. So we've got flat over here. We've got that targeting pod down on here, the outer wing parts, 
generally all looks good solid what's nice as well if you can probably see in here we've been looking around on this they've polished out the ejector pin marks as well so obviously anything that was a little bit proud in the mold and that they've taken their time and gone around and hoofed it off which is a nice touch okay so and in here we got intakes, wheel wells, and this is the interesting one because it actually some looks to be very, very nice detail in these wheel wells. Okay. So on sprue C, as you can see, we've got a lot of stuff going on, but it's very interesting. So obviously we've got a lot of the mechanics for the gear, uh, and obviously for the uh, various bits and pieces that go around and join onto them with linkages and all the various control -y bits. We've got the wheels, which we don't get weight on wheels, unfortunately, but that's not a mass problem. Okay, we've got some of the various things. So the doors themselves, we've got no eject pins inside the door, so that's a nice touch right the way through, so that's all okay. And then again, moving over here, you can see the detail which is in these wheel wells, which is really nice. So we've got very fine raised details for the plumbing and wiring and the various bits and pieces running down on those. So that's nice, so we've got the no system as well. We know we've got a lot of refueling lines run through there. There's a refueling port for the aircrafts in the nose and obviously for nose refueling as well. Those pipes will run through there. And again, we've got the intakes, which do have a couple of eject bins. They're recessed, yeah, if you'd see them or not, I don't know if you would, they're bent down out of the way. This one up here may be, if you were crowning your neck in there. Okay, but generally very nice indeed. We've got the boarding ladder there. This little guy just down in here. So yeah, all looks very, very nice. No problems with any of that. Okay, so this one here is a match pair, purely because I imagine, or well, perhaps not actually. Damn you, staples. Is it? Is it? Is it? Is it? It is. Okay, Sprue D is a match pair, so pretty much as we'd imagined. So, okay, looking through down on here, we've got the nozzles, we've got the blades, we've got all the various parts on here, we've got crew. So, as I say, first stage compressor blades, we've got the um, missile rails, we've got the gear running across the top like that. Fuel tanks, so obviously technically for the belly one is a fuel, uh, air to air refueling one on the F's and the G's I think can carry that. Pylons looking very good as well. We've got a pilot down in here and he has got the J uh, mounts helmet onto that one as well. And yeah, it looks like we've got two heads on there. So you can have the normal one or the uh, J mounted, which is for the uh, targeting system with all the queuing information or a normal head in there. It just looks a very, very just a head but it has, it's got some very fine details. And again, poseable arms, things like that, as you might imagine on that one. And the seat as well, doesn't look too bad. We've got the tailplane, which is a giant composite pit. Okay, the seat sides, all the various things. That doesn't look too bad at all, actually. Some really nice details. And again, down in here for the engine, obviously got that photo etch flame holder that's gonna go in there. That's actually very, very nice indeed. <coughs> Okay, we've also got down in here, again, some of these parts, pretty obviously because of the, um, we've got to have the two-seat version, which will be the F or the G for the growler. Okay, so this is your cockpit tub, looking very nice and detailed in there as well. Nice raised detail, so you could technically paint it, pick out the details, or you have got that uh, little bit of um, uh, decals to go on there. A little bit of photo etch is what we're talking about. That fits down in there on the top over there. That's quite nice. Then over here, we've got the rear deck. So technically, normally you'd have a cockpit in this area and then in. So that's why this sprue E, no doubt we'll see another version as well for the two seat versions, which will replace this one. Okay, so that's nice. And then we've got lots of various things. So we've got weapons down on here. So again, multi-part weapons after seeing a lot of weapons in one piece molded injection molding. So we've got the big bunker buster, uh, the GBU uh, 24 system down in there. Very nice, as you might expect. We've got this polycap system. We've got all those polycaps were earlier. That'll go into those and then gets fitted into those holes up there. So they can be used. Okay, you can pop them on and off the model. Okay, and then to be honest, I don't think we need to go in here. We've got the smaller ones as well, these GBU-12s as well. 
So the 500 pound laser guided bomb as well, same type of setup. And then down in here, we've got your air to air load. So we've actually got the AMRAM or the AIM 120. That is basically one piece molded, just a little strike to put on the side. And then down in here, we've got the sidewinder. So this is a, 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 a Lima older thought. For the last of the old school standard sidewinder for your AIM-9 or well, you've got your AIM-9X as well which is the off-ball um, high aspect high alpha missile with the thrust vector in as well so that's that one we get your pins we were talking about earlier so this is what your uh, the various parts with the poly caps with your weapon fit and everything else will fit to as well that's a nice we got some various ones down here for clear parts so this is noses for the GBUs for the laser spot trackers Okay, down in there like that. Um, we've got more of the, for the weapons and the various things as well down in there, just like that. Then we've got, last up, the clear part. So again, this running round in there loose is a little bit of a worry. But it has got some type of protective bubble, uh, shrink wrap around it. Christ, how do we get in here? Um... um uh, okay, this is where you crack your canopy trying to get into this. Okay, so what we're going to do is very carefully, you know, my version of careful clearly, you don't want to scratch your thing, but this is stickier than sticky the stick insect. Trying to get this out without breaking it is a Oh dear, okay, we made it, but it was worth it. Look at that, there is a tiniest center seam in there. You might just see it, but honestly, I don't think you might even want to worry about it. It is that fine that you can't really see it in there. So that is actually well worth it, beautifully done. Say so that center seam is just a pure, tiniest little line in there. You could probably get away with not actually dealing with it. And then in here, I can find a way in. It's funny because this stuff is really, really grippy. I'm just paranoid about breaking something trying to get in here. Okay. So. Let's hook this over. Okay, so we'll keep it very safe, but this is what this is doing. It's a, a strange little box set thing, but again, there isn't, which is a nice thing about it. There is no center seam on the nose one, and it has got this little plate off the front, which I'm hoping will then aid it going through. I'm assuming that's not a bit of flash, and it is supposed to have that little plate there. But again, it's a shame they haven't done it like Tammy tend to do, where you get a bit of everything around it, so you can mask in instead of going right up to the edge. Would prefer to see it the other way. But you've got your HUD bits, the nav lights, the various things. We've got the seeker down in there as well for the targeting pod, those things. But they are very, very clear. That actually is. We were obviously looking at another kit recently, and they're all over the place. Well, there you go. That shows it's not. That's really very, very nice indeed with both of the clear parts just like that. Okay. There you have it. Apart from it being staples all the way through the bags, the kit itself looks really, really nice. It seems to be on the par, as we said before, going along with that standard way of doing Hasegawa kits. They sort of nailed it and got it down right back in the late 90s with the Legacy Hornets, the A, B, Cs and Ds. Super Hornets come along in really the 2000s, I think it was around about 2005 onwards, uh, that kit came out. So the build is roughly along the same part to it, but nice touches with this one. We do get wing fold up with it. Again, what I said before, it's a more modern version. We've got a more modern cockpit. We've got the sort of ECS pipes at the back, which are correct, various things like that as well. So what you've got really is a bang up to date, modern, uh, Echo Hornet or Superbug. So from that point of view, really, really nice. As I said before, I'm a more of a Fox Rock Growler fan, the two seat version. I think they look a little bit nicer, but as always, they're gonna do all three. You can see that in the kit, it's coming. So just if you are waiting for the two seat version, come and grab it. Does it actually better? 
than Hasegawa's. As I said before, it's a more modern version. So you would need a couple of bits of aftermarket to bring it up to this standard. And I can't see much different with it. I think the way that they've done the nose section, not having it as a three part or four, if you include the canopy with the nose trying to fit that in, that's definitely a nicer way to do it. So from that point of view, very, very nice. I think maybe the actuators and things like that are a little bit clunky, but they are very big, beefy bits of equipment being naval aircraft as they always are. So that is quite nice. And generally I can't really see a fault from looking at it overall looking at the you know, CAD stuff as well it looks to be the correct shape right the way through I'm not a rivet counter as you all know so if it looks right it feels right I'm quite happy with it I'm not worried if it's going to you know so many mill out and it's got 10 rivets missing honestly I don't care overall shape looks good and that's all that counts with it anyway so there we go that's the Meng 48 scale brand new F18E Echo Super Hornet Thank you.